Welcome back to Championship Court as we get set for our first women's doubles semifinal. Megan Fudge there on your screen in the white hat, white top. The 36-year-old out of Florida, originally born in Germany, played her collegiate tennis at the University of Illinois alongside husband Ryler DeHart. Her partner in this top-seeded judo duo is Susanna Barr out of Boise, Idaho, 46 years old. Barr and Fudge had a lot of success on tour last year. They will be facing the four seed in the tournament, the pair of Jill Braverman and Georgia Johnson. Braverman picking up a bronze medal in the mixed doubles alongside Gabe Tardio, the 34-year-old out of Newport Beach, California. And then Georgia Johnson, she has spent a lot of time on championship court this week, and the 17-year-old out of Boynton Beach, Florida. She'll be in championship Sunday in women's singles and in mixed doubles. So Georgia Johnson potentially could go for a triple crown should she and Braverman make it through to, champ er, to the gold medal match that'll be taking place later this afternoon. Chad, what should we expect to see in this matchup? Yeah, both of these teams came through in the semifinal with relatively easy wins. Barr and Fudge winning two and one. Johnson and Braverman five and five. But I'll be looking for Susanna Barr to control the cross-court dink. We saw that Jill Braverman was a little bit susceptible on that right side when the ball was bouncing and, and her feet got stuck. If she's taking the ball out of the air and she can really move that ball around, she's going to put pressure on Barb. And at the same time, if Barr isn't tested and they keep going wide to her, that's her strength with that forehand cross-court dink. If they can get it, you know, if, if Johnson and, and Braverman can get it in between her feet or even to that left foot and throw the timing off a little bit, then they can be a little bit more aggressive. Look for Fudge to speed up at that left hip of Braverman when she's on the right side. She sits a little bit more on that forehand. And we saw yesterday in mixed doubles that when it came lower and onto that backhand side after sitting on the forehand, a little bit more difficult for her to get into that scorpion pancake type volley. And then Georgia Johnson is just, she's steady. But at that same time, if we start seeing those balls in the middle, and we saw it in Punta Gorda when she was partnering with Paris Todd, balls in the middle, then pushing back out wide. After a while, the movement slows down and holes open up. So look for Byron Fudge to move that ball around as well, test it in the middle, push it back out wide. But they also have to look for the power of Georgia Johnson and her ability to speed up off the bounce. Points have been hard to come by for both of these teams' opponents. Barr and Fudge have given up a total of nine points through their first two matches. They won their quarterfinal 2-1 and one over Ashley Candelaria and Ariel Butler. Meanwhile, Braverman and Johnson, they've given up just 14. So both of these teams have been dominant on their way through to the draw in this women's semifinal as Barr and Fudge in the black and teal to serve first. Quick side that, out. Yeah, and there's that power from Georgia Johnson. Ball getting a little bit elevated. Zero, so zero, strong one. with that two-hander. Good backhands from Jill Braverman as well. Ooh. Johnson a little off balance, sends it long. Yeah, she started to crash to the line there rather than the middle. Zero, zero, Fully two. extended. Not able to get that ball down. Yeah. Side out. Another side out. Good attack there from Fudge. Zero, zero, one. Starts with the roll, gets the ball elevated more off of the reset from Braverman. Bar can't make the pickup. And so far, neither team able to get that third shot dropped down. Zero, zero, two. Leaving them up just a little too high. A little bit of a feeling out period right now. What's the adjustment that needs to be made to get the third shot drop in as that one again falls short? Yeah, it's it's taking it just a little bit zero, earlier zero, with the one. contact point because it gets the ball up earlier. And now we start descending before the net rather than above the net. Big forehand from Fudge. Neither but, team been able to get on the scoreboard yet. Yeah, but part of it right now is that they're, they're 
putting good, both teams are putting zero, good zero, pressure two. in the transition zone. They, they're not trying to overhit the ball, but they're getting it down to the feet. And again, right Side there. Out. So not a bad ball from Johnson as she's coming forward, but Fudge gets that ball down zero, zero, one. mid shin on Braverman and, and gets the ball to pop up. Five hole, so. Braverman goes right through the legs of Fudge. Well, this might, at this zero, point, zero, it might two. be a long one if we keep <laughs> keep trading side outs right now. Side right out. off of the hand of Fudge, another side out. So through the first four service games, neither team zero, able to zero, find one. a point. And a good adjustment here from Johnson. Switches point. to that backhand side, hits the right hip of Fudge. And we've one, got zero, one. first point on the board with the missed return. Big <laughs> forehand from Barr cross court. Braveman just a little too far up in that transition area. One, zero, Tough two. to try to pick up an overhead from there. That's an excellent Point. transition from Jill Braverman. Battling to get back into that point, gets the ball down, and a, just two, a zero, little off-pace ball from Johnson. Doesn't get far enough to get that ball over the net. Barr tried to lift the lob, but pushes it long. Three straight points for Braverman Three, and Johnson. Zero, they won their first match 0-4 before taking down Emily Ackerman and Riley Bonert 5-5 five five in the quarterfinal. Make it 4-0 as Barr can't get it to crawl over the tape. Yeah, that's an excellent drive there from Johnson. Four, she doesn't zero, try two. to add too much power, but it's the height and it's the shape. Fudge Point. tried to speed it up on the backhand into the net. And the number one seed on the ropes two. a little bit here in game number one. Oh, good Point. read there from Braverman. Recognizing the hold from Fudge as he tries to Time slide it down the line. Six, zero, Gets two. a little help. One minute from the net court as well. A timeout for Barr and Fudge is on the second serve. Raverman and Johnson have been able to rip off five <laughs> straight points. We went from side out scoring four times to now a six point run. But in this situation here, Barr and Fudge, you know, made a couple of errors early on, but then they tried to start doing too much to make up for it. You know, it's it's difficult when you're you're trying to to make up for some mistakes. You just have to get back into the game, play a little bit cleaner, not try to do too much, move the ball around a little bit more. Braverman and Johnson have been doing the better job as far as keeping the ball down, keeping it below the net, making that ball bounce. Receivers, one timeout remaining. Servers, two timeouts. 6 nothing for the four seed of Braverman and Johnson. It will be a 6-0-2 coming out of the timeout. Six. Right, you correct server. Time in. Nice deep ball from Barr to earn the side out. Johnson saying, my bad. She thought Braverman was a little bit more middle and had a better position. Zero, six, one. And she did to pick that one up. But good pressure from Barr and Fudge to get the serve back. I like that Point cut. On the board. That backhand cut is patented Megan Fudge. Yeah, one, she, six, she adds a lot of backspin to that volley right there. And it just slides through the court. Johnson not able to catch up to it. Yeah. 
Braverman trying to move out for the ATP, catches it off the edge guard. Edge guard. Well, the hard part with that one is Two, that six, one. the angle was deeper. Braverman's trying to allow that to develop, but it got behind a much more difficult with that deeper angle through the kitchen to hit through around the post. Oh, she oh. needed to let that one go. Second serve. And Barr knew it was an out ball. Tough part there because you're two, looking six, for the one-two combination with the speed up. That ball was elevated, definitely going out, but gets a paddle on it. Nice backhand roll from Fudge for the winner. Yeah, she tried to speed one up down the line against Braverman before, but she jumped to the forehand side. This time goes over the left shoulder, knowing that Braverman's going to be sitting two. more forehand, and we see just a slight movement to the forehand from Braverman. Doesn't allow her to catch up onto that backhand side. Yeah. Oh, this that time, she time the ATP out. develops. Well, Bars says it was out. That's it. Big flick, a lot of power. We may get a challenge out of this one. Braverman okay. doesn't think it was going out. I think it happened too quickly for us to see. And it went through the legs of Megan Fudge. We will have a video challenge. I mean, she hit that ball hard. It potentially is close. I'm not sure how deep that was. And in real time, it looked like it was in. I would agree, but again, don't trust me on my opinions <laughs> on whether or not a ball is in. And yeah, this time, Braveman tried for the around the post earlier on that wider, deeper angle. Waited a little too long, wasn't able to bring it back. This, this time she slaps it back with authority. We take a look at the re. That's way That's in. That ball is clearly in and through That's the legs. Five, five so, inches in. <laughs> so around the post five hole as well. Yeah. Way in on that one. Take another look right here. Yeah, no question on that one. A ball well inside the baseline. But Chad, I think you're right. Braverman hit that with such power that moves so quickly through the court. It was difficult to pick up in real time. Oh, absolutely, and with, with the height of the ball. Heights a relative another, term. Take take another look at the baseline cam. We can see easily inside the line right there. So fantastic around the post from Braverman. She made her adjustment from the early one. Call is coming in. After video review, the call stands. My call stands. The ball was in. Side out. Six, three, one. So the call stands based on the referee call. She saw it in. And it is time in. Six, six three, three, one. one. Point. Unfortunate net cord there for Barr as Braverman and Johnson capitalize off of the video Seven, challenge. Three, one. Yeah! Point. I want slid through the middle that catches the baseline. Right now, everything going the way of the four seed. They hold Eight, a five-point advantage. Missed return. 
Yeah, we'll see another timeout here. Timeout receiver from Barr and Fudge. One minute. This one's quickly getting away from them. Just a few too many mistakes. A few too many opportunities for Braverman and Johnson to be aggressive and really go on that attack. Chad, I think you hit the nail on the head, the nail on the head there, and saying in terms of watching Bar and Fudge play, if you followed them for any length of time, they're typically known as a clean brand of pickleball, but they've been making some errors. They don't look quite sharp. Is it more the fact that they've made errors, or have Johnson and Braverman been applying that much pressure? Uh, a bit of both. Braverman and Johnson have, have been moving the ball around well. They're not giving. Uh, the room for Barr and, and Fudge to, to really be consistent. They're staying a little bit tighter into the body. So it's the pressure from that, that it, that's forcing the opportunities for those balls to sit up. Seconds. But also, you know, they've, they've been a little bit more aggressive. We we see that drive Receivers, there. No time the last remaining. point from Johnson Servers, going through the middle. Outs. They're doing a good job uh, of, of keeping Barr and Fudge time off in. balance and not able enabling Nine, them three, to one. be able to find a rhythm. Serve. Big ball from Barr. It brings up a second serve for Braverman and Johnson. We have already had one upset in the quarterfinals. Millie Rain and Yana Newell, the Nine, seventh three, seed, two. taking down the two seed in Allison Harris and Simone Jorgin. there. Yeah, nice angle there from Fudge on the overhead. Been an excellent offensive lob from Bar Braverman kind of running in line with it. Almost ran into the ball there. The top seed trailing by six here in game number one. Make it five as Fudge unleashes a forehand down the line. A little late on the movement there by Braverman coming out of the stack, she hangs in the middle. Four nine one. And then tries to lunge to cover that ball down the line, but gave Fudge too much room for the nice drive. Bar stepping across, but just puts it long. Yeah, had the opening there, but the swing flattened out on her. Tried to overhit it just a little too much. 492. Braverman tried the lob. It's long. Another point for Barr and Fudge. They're back within four. 5-9-2. Little more firepower from Fudge there at the kitchen line. Yeah, and a good a good adjustment there from Braverman, even getting a paddle on that one that kicked Six, off nine, the net two. court. But Fudge and Barr are starting to be, excuse me, a little bit more aggressive, putting the pressure on. It's resulted in a three-point run. Didn't have enough clearance side out. Yeah, not the depth there on that lob for Fudge. Nine, six, one. Braveman, nice job just opening up the hips, getting on top of it. Bar stepping across, it's long, and it brings up game point for Braverman and Johnson. 
Yeah, again, Barr just trying to do too much there. 10, 6, Big swing with the shoulder. Second serve. Able to stave off one game point. That's a that's a 10 6 1 speed up right there. Trying to 10, 6, be aggressive off of a ball that's probably not the best to speed up from. And then point the miss game, return from Bart gives them Johnson game one. Braverman. Braverman and Johnson take game one against the top seed 11 to 6. Game two coming up next here on Championship Court. Don't go anywhere. It's the 2024 APP Sacramento Open on ESPN. When I have pain from arthritis, I grab BioFreeze. Unlike Voltaren, BioFreeze provides fast-acting relief. I can apply it to more areas of my body, and it's NSAID-free. Cool the pain so I can get back on the court. Nothing brings us together like Eggland's best eggs. We love the taste, always so fresh and delicious, plus superior nutrition. For us, it's eggs any style, as long as they're the best. Eggland's best. From tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend when he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance. Knees will be slapped, suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Welcome back to Championship Court. Braverman and Johnson to serve first after taking game one, 11 to six, over the top seed of Susanna Barr and Megan game Fudge two. here on Championship Court. Time in, zero, zero, 2 Barr and Fudge have not played a three game match yet in the draw. Side out. Earn a quick side out there. Better adjustment there from Barr getting on top of that one, getting it down to the feet of Johnson. Zero, zero, 1 Johnson got too big. <laughs> there, were, there were four miss hits there from Bar that somehow kept them in the point. One zero one. Johnson trying to do too much with the overhead. Go straight into the top of the net. Get it over the top of Braverman right back through the middle. And I mean, that's the ball that Barr has success with, with that offensive lob as far as taking it One, out zero, of the air two. and pushing it back. She just flicked the wrist up on it too much. Well, the margin of error on that offensive lob is so small. And Braverman finding some space through the middle. Yeah, that's a good spot for the overhead. Goes just outside the right foot of Megan Fudge Zero as she one drops one. into the backhand defense. Second serve. Powerful forehand from Barr pushing Braverman back. Well, Braverman had the upper hand right there, but there was a hesitation from her to step forward. She sped Zero up one two. just a couple of steps inside the baseline and gave a little bit too much time for Barr. Bar speed up off the tape. 
saw it out. Call it out. Ball the referee said she saw it out as well. Are they going to challenge it? Referee timeout. Definitely looked out once that ball team. kicked up off the net cord. The result of the, um, yeah, go. We'll go. All right, again, oh, so both four plays are going into the same corner right now. <laughs> no, what about it's like Barr and Fudge in. didn't want to yeah, switch chairs. Of course, the ones on this side are out in the sun. That one's got a little bit more shade. Now, at least uh, the weather here in Sacramento is a little bit breezy. The sun has come out here on championship quarters. We take another look. Oh, <laughs> It's tight. That one was indeed tight. What do you think, Chad? I mean, I'm telling you, when it's when it's live, it looked a lot deeper than that. But I mean, this one right now looks like it almost catches the back of the line. I mean, right right there, it looks like it catches the back of the line from. When we're watching it from this end, it looked like it was a couple of inches deep. The call on the court was out. Still waiting on a decision here from our referees. We get a decision coming right now. Looks like they are going to overturn the call. If I'm reading my hand signals correctly. <laughs> Easier to read hand signals or read lips? Well, I got to do both at times actually because I have ADD and I'm a little bit deaf in my left After ear. Review. I, I, I read lips quite often. The out, the out call, the call was overturned. The ball was out. It, in. Oh, in. <laughs> in. Sorry. The ball was in. So the call was overturned. The ball was in off, <laughs> off the back of the line. So both video Sorry, challenges here in. So in this we match have confirmed that the ball is in. A side out. One, one. It will one give the serve one. back over to Bar and Fudge at 1 0 1 and keep Time Braverman in. and Johnson off the board. 1 0 1. Johnson Second going serve. full steam ahead at Bar. Yeah, nice overhead there from Johnson. Gets it deep. 1 0 2. Tough to pick up here. One knee, oh, oh, straight into the right oh. shoulder. It would have been a hip had Braverman not been down on both knees at the kitchen line. Yeah, we see a drop down right here. Obviously faster to just play it from there than get up. <laughs> but the hip started turning, the paddle got onto the backhand side. Time in. 2-0-2. Two, 2-0-2. Zero, two. Two, zero, two. Just wide. Oh. <laughs> Braverman trying to go Point. inside out forehand. Just missed it. 3 1 2. Whoa. They're not going to challenge that one. No, I didn't see it. I can't overrule it. Time in. Oh, guess I'm not going to challenge it. That one looked close. It did indeed from our vantage point. But instead, it is 4-0 side, side out. out for Braverman and Johnson. 
Carr Point. can't make the pickup. Really targeting Braverman there with those aggressive cross-court dinks. Yeah, just tried to rush that forehand there, but it was a, it was the one, four, ball one. there from Braverman. Two balls into the middle, got past Stuck, and then went back out wide. Fudge getting too big at the kitchen line, and Braverman getting into it a little bit. Nice defense there from Braverman. Again, drops down into the prayer position, gets a shovel, shovel block. Two, four, Watching one. Jill Braverman play this match feels like it's also a yoga class. <laughs> the ball's gonna land in. from Johnson on the drop volley from Fudge. Slips a little bit. Braverman says, Three, don't four, worry, one. I'll come over with the backhand. Gets on top of two and then slides it to the right hip of Bart. Point. Four straight points. We are tied up at four here in game number two. Feet still moving a little bit there from Fudge. Four, four, one. Fudge driving Braverman back. Braverman and Johnson four, four, still two. on serve at 4 4 2. That's a good combination there from Georgia. Johnson knows that it's going to be four, a bigger two. swing from Barr on the backhand side there, so she's going to be late on the forehand. Braverman forehand winner through the middle. They've taken a two-point lead here in game number two as Barr and Fudge take a timeout to talk it over. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a better job coming in these last six points from Braverman and Johnson as far as regaining control and moving the ball around. You're seeing the pressure more on Barr where they're pinching middle, going back out wide, keeping her off balance. And you know, one way to look at, at the advantage in these ones is by watching who is established at the kitchen line and who's really having to move around and force the movement. In game one, Braverman and Johnson were set. They were established and moving Barr and Fudge around on the four-point run for Barr and Fudge to start game number two they were the ones that were established and Johnson and Braverman were, were scrambling a little bit now they've settled back into it and they're putting the pressure on Barr and Fudge like I I'll said bringing that ball into the middle pushing back out wide going behind Fudge moving that ball around and they're not able to establish seconds the the rhythm or the or the consistency right now that they need it was about this point in game number one that Receivers, Braverman and Johnson made remaining. their move. Servers, they were trailing 6 nothing, And at that six-point mark, they then went on a run, ended up taking that first game 11-6. to six. Oh, there. Nope, other way. Yep. yep. I can read my own handwriting. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Time in. But still, six, this four, is when two. they started yes. to pull away. Yes. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Let's put it that <laughs> Oh, caught the Ooh. line. Oh, oh tremendous yeah. defense from Barr to keep them in that point. Johnson thought that ball was going to go out, ends up catching the line, hits it off balance. Good finish from Fudge, but yeah, the defense there just to keep him in the point. Four, six, one. Out of the timeout, they are in the side out. Second Fudge serve. comes up short, second serve. Four six two. Yeah, that ball's out. Side out. Better read there from Johnson. 
A good job getting up and hitting that overhead there from a mid lob Six from Megan one. Fudge. And Barr and Fudge were also the top seed in the first tournament of the season as Barr Second puts serve. it through the court and Punta Gorda. They lost in that tournament in the semifinal. Ended up losing to Millie Rain and Bobby Oshiro, who took gold. 6 4 2. A little Point. help from the net court there for Georgia Johnson. Kicks up, Barr not able to do anything with it. Braverman and Johnson Seven, have been four, able two. to score multiple points on second serve. They get Point. another one there as that ball did not come up on the return. And now they have doubled up Barr and Fudge. 8-4-2. Point. Nice ball there from Johnson, getting it behind Fudge. Timeout receivers. They're going to take four, another timeout, trying to slow the momentum and slow the roll here for Braverman and Johnson. How do Fudge and Barr try and do that coming out of the timeout? They've got to get back to controlling the point, moving Braverman and Johnson around. It's been difficult for them to do, but, you know, it's almost like they, they just need to establish their footwork better and, and, and control the movement. Well, there's one thing that Barr and Fudge do not want to see, and that is an electrified Jill Braverman. But that's what Braverman brings to pickleball to this match. She's feeling it right now. She and Georgia Johnson dancing over at the sideline. And we have seen a lot of moves from Braverman in this match on the court. It feels like she's been everywhere. She She's one of the uh, more animated <laughs> players in pickleball. 15 seconds. We see this one, she's back on the ground, those. trying to play it off the knees. She had the around Server. the post. Two timeouts. <laughs> the body shot going to the court is, she'll take that as long as her team is up by a game and by five points here Time in end. game number two. 9-4-2. 9-4-2, trying to close in on a spot in the gold medal match. Point. Nice ball movement there again from Johnson and Braverman. Johnson getting that ball back behind Fudge, 10, creating 10. the pop up. Braverman reaches in, puts it at the feet. And it brings up match point. Johnson point. finishes point. it off. Match. The top Braverman seed is Johnson. out of the draw. Braverman. Jillian Braverman and Georgia Johnson advancing into the women's doubles okay. gold medal match. They take down Barr and Fudge, 11-6, 11-4. We will hear from the winners when we come back here on Championship Court at the APP Sacramento Open. Unless it's less beer. Cat tire. The ProXR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. ProXR gives you more spin greater control and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. I'm Vivian Chan here with Plastic Pickles and we're putting the pickle into pickleball. In pickleball, a slice is a chop shot used to create backspin on the ball. I'm going to show you how to make a fried chicken sandwich topped with plastic sandwich dill pickle chips that will put your taste buds into a spin.
Now this is a really big deal. And right, we're taking a look at match point for Georgia Johnson and Jill Braverman. Fantastic job moving the ball around, inserting power where it needed to be. They're moving on to winner's bracket final. And we're going to throw it down to Dominic Catalano, who's courtside with our Franklin post-match interview. All right, Jill, I'll first start with you. Yesterday, you yeah. and I had a discussion after your last match of the day. You like the left side better. You guys came out with you on the right side. What's the strategy there? Because you do like the left side a little better. Well, it's a great question. Georgia is my left side queen, so mad respect to her for that. And then I actually am falling in love with the right because I'm long and lanky. So if you just reach in, you take all their time away and kind of just keep the ball moving around to set Georgia up. And Georgia, like Jill says, setting you up. She's one of the best players we know through transition area. She resets everything, gets it back in. What's it mean to you playing next to her when you know everything's coming back? Uh, it's really helpful to just be able to, you know, focus on um, uh, just staying at the staying at the net and waiting for one I can poach off or, or when we get to the line together. And uh, it's really great to just know how solid my partner is and know that we're always going to get to the net. All right, well, congratulations, ladies. Moving on to the gold medal match later on this afternoon, so go take a break. Well deserved. We'll take a quick break here. Be back with a men's semifinal match around championship court at the APP Sacramento Open.